Hello and welcome to today's video. So surprise, surprise, we're talking about gut health again. No surprise there. Um, but to give you some context, I'm looking at this as a gut healing is a is a progression, right? You don't just start at the end. You start right at the beginning. And there's a progressive process that you have to go through healing the gut. Like, I'll give you a really good example. Something that I see happen a lot is people get stuck and in, in a way they develop a sort of somatic eating disorder where they avoid eating certain foods because the foods make them feel bad. And I mean, you say, well, duh, genius. Of course, I'm not going to eat something if it makes me feel bad. But you can actually get to a point where the fear of the, the emotions that you feel associated to the way the symptoms make you feel is enough of an aversion to not eat the food, even if your body has regained the ability to eat the food. But that's the thing. That comes at a later stage. If you're still in a point where your body doesn't have the ability on a, on a physiological level to be able to digest those foods, none of that is relevant. So you have to make sure that you're focused in your healing protocol at the, the place that you're at. And you, you have to start at the beginning and then you have to progress through it. So what does this look like? What does this progression look like? And I'm going to use this with an example of context of a, of a client that I just uh, started working with today. So you start in the, I have a lot of symptoms, I'm being caused a lot of discomfort and a lot of pain and I have a lot of a lot of sensations happening in my body that I don't really want to feel. You know, this can be like abdominal pain, this can be things like bloating and gas, constipation, diarrhea, this can be heartburn, reflux, this can be bile reflux, this can be, you name it, like gallstones, all of these different types of things that are really like uncomfortable, right? And the, the best thing we can do at this stage is to help you feel better, because if you're feeling better, it means your body is is functioning more optimally. Every time you have a symptom that makes you feel bad, it's because your body is struggling to function. So if we support your body to function, the symptom goes away by itself because the body is able to function better. This isn't the case if you take a medication. If you take a medication, you're probably suppressing the symptom. So you're sort of just dulling how how loud it's is speaking. That's that's not a, that's not a true solution. I'm not against medication. It all has to be used in context. Right? But it's not resolving the root cause. When you relieve a symptom by supporting the body, so you, you listen to the symptom and you provide the body support through like dietary changes, supplementation, change, just changing something, you know, you change something in, in the approach that you're, that you're doing. When you do this and you feel better, this means your body is functioning better. It means your body is able to process what you're eating, it's able to digest the foods that you're consuming. If you get like less fatigue, less brain fog, because this is this is something that maybe you're not so aware of, right? There's so much happening in your body that is caused by digestive problems that doesn't even seem slightly related to digestive problems. So things like autoimmune conditions, arthritis, headaches, migraines, myofascial pain, MS, chronic fatigue syndrome, post -exercise, poor post-exercise recovery. Uh, hormone imbalances, skin problems, like these are all actually connected to the gut. These are all rooted in the gut. And if the gut still has a level of dysfunction, working on these these symptoms as like steps down of like, so the problem is here and then we're working over here. It's like we need to work on the actual problem itself. And when you support this this dysfunction through dietary changes, through supplementation, through different types of alternative therapies, you get immediate symptom improvement, so you feel better. So th this is, I find this is really nice, especially in like, like in a, in a coaching program, say for example. It's really easy to stick to a program when you feel better as a consequence. You know, if somebody says like, oh yeah, we need to do this, this protocol, and you're gonna feel worse while you're doing it, you're gonna, it's gonna make you think like, well, I don't really wanna do it. And you might be able to sort of like sacrifice the in the moment um, discomfort for the like the long-term improvements so this is the logic that's behind like antimicrobial phases killing protocols things like that but if you do a protocol instead that you start it and you actually feel better every week as you go along so you start on within like two weeks you've already got like 20 percent symptom improvement so this doesn't mean you're like oh i'm herxing i feel really crap my bowel habits are really worse like i actually feel better 
not only is it easier to stick to a protocol like this because obviously you feel better it's, you, you're like okay I can see results I like this this is good this means it's working so not only do you have that but because your symptoms are reduced this means it's actually working and this means your protocol is not fighting your body you're not you're not you're not being a tyrant to your body, you know? So it's like, I see this, this happens a lot for me in my, in my business, like being self-employed. It's easy to say like, oh, you need to do this and just do it. Like, just do it. And you're like being a tyrant. You're trying to force yourself because you're, you're, the, you're the boss and you're also the employee. But the same is true like in you in your body and with your health, right? You're, you're the patient, but you're also the doctor. You're treating yourself. Like even, even with what doctors say, even if you work with a coach, practitioner, um, uh, a natural path, whatever, you're still like the doctor to your own body, right? Because you're the one that, that implements all the advice that they give you. So you are the doctor and the patient at the same time. So it's going to be way easier for you to continue being that doctor, like taking responsibility and making sure that you're getting where you want to go. If as a patient, you actually feel better. If you actually feel like this is working, you know, this is making me feel good. And I find this is, this is a big distinction between what's sustainable and what isn't. You're only going to be able to do a killing protocol for so long. You're only going to make, be able to make yourself feel like shit for so long before you're like, okay, I can't do it anymore. And I find these things don't work because you're, anything that's causing you to sacrifice in the short term for a later result doesn't actually work because you need to be, it's all about the focus, right? If you're sacrificing now, you're like, I'm going to go through hardship so that I can have pleasure. What you're actually doing is you're creating hardship now, which is going to create hardship in the future. If you're doing a healing protocol that in the moment is making you feel better, that is a sustainable trajectory that's going to make you feel better in the long run as well. And feel better is is the metric that is important here because not only does it make it sustainable, but it also means you're working with your body. If you're ever doing something and it makes you feel worse, you're not working with your body. And that's 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 never the way to go. You want to be working with your body. Like for, for me, for example, so... I just I just started working with a personal trainer. I just John and I we just signed up to a gym, and it's kind of like coaching, you know. So we're working with a we're working with a so we like we get trained together with a coach. So we pay money, they they help to train us. This gives us accountability. This is one thing that I love about coaching. You know, I I give out so much information for free all the time. Like I just gave you so much information already. I got like I've literally got like so many videos, like five hundred videos or something in the last two years. If you watched every single one of my videos, you'd have all of the information in your head that I have now that you use to heal. To, to heal. But it's another thing to have the information and it's another thing to actually do it, you know? I've known how to work out. I know how to, like, use a gym. But I don't because I don't have anybody, like, chasing, chasing me to make sure that I do it. There's no, there's no accountability. And it's not something that you can always do yourself, you know? Obviously, having intrinsic motivation is helpful, you know? But we only have so much intrinsic motivation. And some of these jobs, it's good to outsource other people, you know, to keep you accountable. So now I've got my personal trainer, and I also have Joanna, because I'm doing it with her. So we're going we're gonna to keep, keep each other motivated to, to do this. Kian, lovely to see you, Kian. Nice to have you here. Kian says, fuck yeah, I just started kickboxing classes two weeks ago. Awesome, I love it. I'm really interested in trying kickboxing, like Muay Thai, or the, the mixed martial arts type type um what do you call it martial arts i'm really i'm really into doing that but i'm so unfit at the minute that i need to get some fitness before i can do something like that we did <laughs> today we did we were exhausted just doing the warm up you know <laughs> we we just finished the warm up and i'm like okay are we done and he's like no we just finished the warm up <laughs> now we now we work out and i was like oh my god <laughs> i'm so unfit so this is really good. Like you're going to see, like you watch me the next month, the next two months, the next three months, I'm going to be a completely different person. And this is the difference between having information and applying some of it, but without accountability versus having somebody that is literally like they're there, you know, they're there to support you. Like if I have so something that really stops me training is I get a lot of trigger points. I have a lot of uh, things in the past from like myofascial pain syndrome where I get trigger points in my muscles, in my calves, in my shoulders, in my, like everywhere. And obviously this, this fits the model of if it hurts, I don't want to do it. And if your healing protocol is painful, like if it's making you feel worse in the short term, you're not going to want to do it. So this is the benefit of having an expert. I can say I have 
pain here. Like, what do I do about it? And he's like, okay, use a foam roller, use a ball, use this, use the massage gun. And he like helped me there and showed me how to do it. So it's like, now I have that insight and I can use it at home. Kion says, yes, my trainer is a Muay Thai expert, but that class is hard. Exactly. Got exhausted in the first 15 minutes, but so worth it. Yeah, this is this is the conditioning process. I, I Something that I really love is people who I'm... I feel really connected to. I feel a strong connection to you, Kion. I feel like we go through the same themes in our life, you know? You've just signed up for a trainer, and, we, and we've just signed up for a trainer as well. It's like, there's a good likelihood for anybody listening, if you've signed up for like a gym or a trainer in the last two weeks, or you feel like you're going to be in the next two weeks, that we have a connection, you know? We're on the same vibe. We're going the same direction in life. Because I know that... I've, so, I've worked with Kian, and our healing journeys have been so similar they've coincided like we've had we've achieved similar breakthroughs at similar points and now we're both moving into the the improving our physical performance and endurance it's it's so cool to see i'm really happy to hear that you're that you're doing that Kion. It's, it's really cool to me it feels like a really good sign that i'm on the right track if it's also the same track that you're on he says uh, we are up leveling at the same time and can motivate and inspire each other absolutely let's do that that would be really cool um, I know that the gym that I'm going to, we've got, they're taking like fitness pictures and they do weight measurements and we get to have like our body mass index and our fat percentages all measured. So this is going to be, going to be really a lot of fun. So tying this back into the healing process, especially orientated around the gut. So where do we, where do we start with something like this? So we start with the five pillars and this is what I was talking about with the client that I was just, that I just mentioned a minute ago. The five pillars are the five primary, like basic physiological functions of the digestive system. Like on the most basic level, and we're talking like 100% hardcore science and physiology. Like you can go, you can like cut your body open. I'm not saying do this. You could cut your body open and all of these processes that I'm about to describe, you can literally point to them and say like, this is stomach acid being produced. This is digestive enzymes. This is where they come from. This is bio. Like, you could cut yourself open and you see it. Like, there's no metaphysics. There's no energy. It's like, it's purely physical. It's science. It's rationality. It's logic. And this is where you have to start. Because while there is a lot of, like, emotional root cause, and, and I say this because this client was telling me, I've had anxiety for some time, and maybe there's an emotional root cause to this. And I'm like, great. That's so wonderful that you're aware of that. But... We can't start there because we have to give you a good physiological base first. We have to make sure your body your body is functioning on a physiological level before it's even going to be able to feel resourced enough to be able to take a look at these emotional things. And I, I say this as well because I have a, I have a saying, you cannot med meditate yourself out of chemical depression. If your gut is not functioning properly, if you have an imbalance in the microflora, 95%, I thought this was like 80%, it's 95%. 95% of your serotonin is in your gut, not in your brain. And we know how much of an important role serotonin plays in our mood and our productivity and us feeling good. So 95% of this is present in your gut, 5% is present in your brain and the rest of your nervous system. So if you have a gut imbalance, the microflora are what take the precursor, the 5-HTP, 5-hydroxytryptophan, in your food, and turn it into serotonin. So if you have, for example, a mood disorder, anxiety, depression, a mental health problem, you have to look at the gut first. There's no point taking a medication. There's no point taking a, like an SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. It's got serotonin in the name of the medication. And 95% of the serotonin is in the gut. So let's actually fix the gut, you know? Let's work where the problem actually is. And I'm not saying don't use medication, right? That's not what I'm saying. It has its place. But don't use medication as a first-line approach when we can look at an easy root cause of, well, 95% of the serotonin is in the gut and is produced in the gut. Let's look at the gut health first, you know? That's logic. Kian says, the body has to be conditioned and primed to process new emotional growth. That is so true. It's like, you need a foundation, you need a base. It says, otherwise the nervous system won't be strong enough and it will feel like trauma. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's like what I'm saying transcribed in different words. If that resonates more with you, that's exactly what I'm saying. So we need a foundation of a, 
of a so the really good example here is let's let's use an analogy it's like you can't send electrical currents unless you have a strong infrastructure you need to have the big cables that connect the the, the way for the electricity to be signaled so the electricity in this situation is your is your the emotions that you experience through your nervous system if your nervous system isn't healthy if it doesn't have electrolytes if it doesn't have the neurotransmitters that it needs it's not going to be able to function on like a basic physiological level so we need to make sure that we we, we put those there first and that can reduce a lot of symptoms in itself you know because if your depression or your anxiety is caused by a physical problem you fix the physical problem and the actual emotion thing goes away it's really fascinating to see you know usually there is still some emotional component that we need to work on but that's the next step you know and this is what i'm saying this is a process you don't just jump right in on the emotional healing you know you need to, to start on the physical and then work your way through it it's a it's a it's a process it's a procedure and it makes sense you know you need this foundation before you can move into that to that second side of things Kian says there's so many nerve endings in the gut. Yeah, it's literally called like the second brain, you know? And I think I think if you look at it realistically, it's more like the first brain. And this is the second brain. Because if you if you look at the way that you behave, a lot of it's unconscious. And it's really like if you're really in tune with your gut, you trust your gut for all of the important decisions, you know? You can have like a business meeting and someone's like, oh yeah, we're gonna make so much money and blah blah blah. But if in your gut it feels wrong, you trust your gut, you know, you trust your gut every time, and it's always right. So this is the first brain, this is the second brain. So we need to focus down here. And the five pillars are the five primary functions of the digestive system. So you've got stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, motility, mucosa. These are the five functions of the digestive system. If you have a gut problem, I guarantee you, without a doubt, it's one of these five things. Whether it's physically based or emotionally based, I can't tell you just yet. But still, we have to make sure that the physical is sorted out first before we can work on the emotional. It's very hard to do it if if there is a level of dysfunction. And I find that if we can figure out which one of these five pillars is struggling, and in, in more cases than one, in my case, in the client that I was just speaking with, it's all five, you know? There's dysfunction in stomach acid, there's low stomach acid levels, things like gastritis being present, digestive enzyme insufficiency, which when you take this out of the digestive system, actually looks like other things, you know, it looks like fatigue, it looks like atherosclerotic plaques in the arteries, things like heart disease, it's actually an enzyme deficiency. So it goes so much broadly than, than just the gut, there's, there's big effects everywhere. Bile health, really connected to detoxification. If you've got any kind of liver problem, that's gonna affect your hormones. So your hormonal health is directly connected to the health of the bile pillar. Of the, of the bile, the, the liver and the gallbladder function in the digestive system. So if you've got a hormonal problem and you haven't looked at the health of the liver, the gallbladder and the quality of the bile that's coming out of it and the state of how that's interacting with the digestive system, you haven't gone far enough into the function of what's actually happening here. If you're looking at like, why do you have high cortisol? Why do I have a low stress response? But you don't know how your liver's functioning. Like it's directly connected and you need to look there. It's, it's really, really important. Motility primarily regulated by serotonin in the gut. That's why there's more serotonin in the gut than in the brain, because it's reg it's what regulates the motility. So if you've got constipation or diarrhea, and it's a problem with motility, or literally every single time, you're gonna have a mood disorder. And how cool is this, right? Serotonin regulates motility in the gut. Think about the fight or flight response. When you're in fight or flight, you either get constipated, because you shut down all digestive function, or you get diarrhea, because your body's trying to evacuate the bowels so that you can run. So when you've got fight, fly, or freeze, this is, this is an emotional trauma response, right? This is gonna be connected to anxiety and depression. Imagine if you feel like you're under attack all of the time, you're in a sympathetic dominant state, that's gonna make you feel like you're, an you're anxious. And if you're stuck in freeze all the time, so you can't take action to move your life where you want it to go, you're gonna feel depressed. And these are directly connected with the state of the, of the microbiome, of the serotonin levels, they're all connected, you know? But it doesn't make sense to work on the anxiety and the depression on an emotional level until we've made sure that the gut is actually functioning properly, the microbiome is producing the right level of these of these neurotransmitters, these 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 molecules that make you feel a different way. There's no point working on the emotion until we've made sure that we've ruled out this on a on a physiological level first. And then finally we've got the mucosa. So the mucosa is really interesting because I'm sure you've probably heard of like leaky gut or gastrointestinal hyperpermeability. If you've got a problem here, this is what this is really where it's rooted in like having problems elsewhere in the body. So if you've got like skin problems or autoimmunity or um, 
like a, a mood disorder, these can really be connected to this as well, you know? If you've got a molecule that's leaking through your gut, and your body attacks that molecule, because obviously it's in your bloodstream now, it isn't supposed to be there. Your body attacks this molecule. If this molecule looks like any other substance in your body, your body's also now triggering an immune response to that. So if this molecule that leaks in looks like part of the cartilage in your knee, you now have autoimmune rheumatoid arthritis. If this looks like a part of your brain, your brain, your, your body starts attacking your brain and your nervous system. It's like, okay, great. Now you've got multiple sclerosis. It's like, it's really interesting and fascinating to see how leaky gut connects to all of these other things. And it affects your digestive function a lot. You know, if your gut is leaky, it, it has a, not only does it lose its barrier function, it also loses its ability to digest a lot of your food. So many of the enzymes in your digestive system are brush border enzymes, which means, I'm sure you've probably seen like the Activia commercial, you know, you go through your gut and you like see these like, ooh, there's like these, these like, these like fingers like wiggling all the way through your digestive system. It's like this big tunnel of like little fingers wiggling. On the top of these fingers, you've got little enzymes like all over the surface of all of them. And these are what break the food down in the last step of digestion. So even if you've got like good stomach acid, good bile, good digestive enzymes, and you break your food down like 90% of the way, if this, this, if this mucosa is damaged, these final enzymes that you need to be able to get that food from the 90% digested to the 100% digested so that you can absorb it and actually use it as fuel, if that's damaged, that doesn't happen. And then that 90% of digestive effort that you, you put in all of that effort that your body put in to digest that food goes to waste, you know? The food that is not properly digested begins to ferment, you get gassy, you get all of the symptoms that are associated with like microbial growth. So you can get like SIBO and um, CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, like dysbiosis, maldigestion, you can see food in the stool. You can see all of these things, you know? And this is because that final stage of digestion hasn't taken place. So, there's an emotional root to all of these things, right? There's an emotional connection to all of these things. There's hormonal connections, there's nervous system connections. The body is a holistic organism. You can't, you can't differentiate physical from emotional. They're always intrinsically connected. But it's really hard to start working on the emotional side of things if we don't have a good physical base first. So it's like you start on the physical, then you move more into the emotional, and then as, as it always happens, you move back from the emotional, back into the physical, physical, back into the emotional, and then you start to like bounce between the two. And you could actually say that this is sort of like, you're internally swapping polarity of different healing modalities. So it's like, it's going from masculine to feminine. This logical, scientific, physical is way more masculine in nature. And then at some point you need to move into the feminine, which is like the feely, emotional, irrational, doesn't make any logical sense, but it's still right. And then you do that, and then you get so far with that, and then you reach a new level of polarity. And the next time you can move back into the masculine, you can go even further, because now you're working on the physical, like you're working on your diet, you're working on your supplements, but there's a level of intuition this time. You're like, this makes me feel better, and I, and I know, and this improves my mood, and I can feel my body asking me for this. So then you work on the physical. On a, on a new level, you know, it's like you've taken it a step further and now you're bringing that feminine essence of like inner knowledge and intuition into what you're doing physically. And this is where it gets, gets a lot more personalized. So when we start, I'm saying like five pillars, great place to start. But if you're already past that, you've already started working on the emotional as well, just following a five pillars template, it could still be helpful if you missed anything, but the real answers that you're looking for now are intuitive. You need to blend that emotional, intuitive, irrational, illogical essence into the logical, into the physical approach. And that's where you're going to get the next level of results. And then again, the polar polarity swaps back. You go back into the feminine, but you have a new level of structure. You know, you have a new level of understanding. You have a new level of awareness that you're able to hold for this, for this process. So this is why healing takes time. You know, first of all, you have to make sure you're, you're working where you're at, you know, for me right now, I've moved from the masculine, which is like the physical stuff. I moved into the feminine, which is where I started working on healing lots of traumas and stuff. I moved, and now I'm moving, I've moved back into the masculine again, but now it's more intuitive, you know? There's less logic, there's less science. It's more about like, this feels right. And from here, I'm now moving back into the feminine again. So I'm moving back into this like new level of feeling. And it's like, it's a lot. It's a deeper level of, of trauma healing. It's a deeper level of nervous system rebalancing. It's a different level of, of integration. 
And as you keep doing this, you bounce back and far, back and forth more quickly. You know, so I was in the, in the, on that first stage for a good three years. And then I started working more on the moving into that first stage of the feminine polarity for, I'd say, a, a good two years. And then I moved back into the, to the physical again, and it was only about a year. And now the, the, the polarity is swapping faster and faster and faster. So eventually I'm going to get to a point where I'm swapping like every two weeks, you know. And this is where you get really good results because you're, you're able to swap between both. But this requires different types of healing. And this is depending on where you're at in your in your healing process. So you really have to make sure that you calibrate what you're doing and where you're focusing based on where you're actually at. You know, if you're at that stage where you've done all the physical stuff, it doesn't matter how many physical changes you make. You know, you can refine your diet better. You can restrict your diet more. You can do more of that stuff, but it's not going to get you the results. You need to move into that next stage, which is a swap of polarity which is where we're looking on trauma integration and emotional healing and learning how to feel again. And then you'll get to a certain point where you're like, okay, I've done that enough. And you're like, okay, I need to move back into the logic. And so like for me, I'm like, okay, I need more structure in my life. I need more discipline. I need to work out. I need to get a trainer. Very logical, very rational, very scientific. So it's like, okay, that's where I am. And then we'll swap again. We'll go back into the other side. Maybe I need to work with a therapist. Maybe I need to take some psychedelics. Maybe I need to hire a trauma integration coach. It's like, this, this changes, you know? And if you think that healing just looks the same, and it's been the same for you for the last, like, 10 years, or even the last, like, two years, maybe you're at a point where you need to try swapping polarity and trying some different types of healing modalities. So, that's where my invitation for you is today. So, I want to help you figure out where you are and where your next step is. So, if you're not sure, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say, like, where you're at in your healing journey, what your symptoms are, what your past is, and I'll help you figure out where we need to go from here, where the next step in your healing journey is. And if it's something I can help you with, then I'd absolutely love to. You know, I've swapped back and forth a few times. I'm not, this isn't my first rodeo. I know how to do this now. But if it's an issue that I can't help you with, I'm literally connected with so many different healers, you know? I've got, I've got Kian in here. He's, he's not, he doesn't, I don't think he brand, brands himself as a healer. He's a fast, fantastic, brilliant mind, you know? He, he knows his stuff. I've got functional medicine practitioners, I've got Reiki practitioners, I've got psychotherapists, I've got family constellation therapists, I've got personal trainers, like, I've got physiotherapists. I have so many people I can connect you with. So let me know where you're at and I'll help you figure out where your next step is. And as I said, if it's something I can help you with, great, I'll be more than happy to do that. But if you need somebody else's support, I've got no problems just saying like, this person can help you better than I can. And I'll send you over to them and you go work with them, you know? And you get that next level of healing so you can level up your life and you can have less pain, you can have less symptoms, you can feel better, you can perform better, you can work more, you can make more money, you can have better relationships, like wherever it is that you want to improve, like you can, you know, you just need the right support. And for, for me right now, I need a personal trainer. So I'm working with a personal trainer. I'm still working with physiotherapists, I'm still working with a psychotherapist and family constellations practitioner. I'm going across the board, you know, I go where, I take the support where it's needed. And I'd love to help you do the same. So let me know where you're at, let me know how I can help and let me know where you feel like you need to go and I'll see how I can connect you with who you need to be connected with. If you're a bit of a more complicated case, maybe we need to do this in the in a consultation. Again, I would love to do that. I'm definitely going to give you the direction that you need. So just let me know where you're at. Let me know if you need help figuring out where you want to go and I'd be more than happy to connect you with somebody that can, can help you out. So if you're at the first step, five pillars is where I would point you. Any further than that, contact me and let me know and I'll help you figure out where to go. So that's everything from me today. If you have any questions, please let me know. It's been absolutely lovely talking to you today. Really fun. I've been procrastinating my, my videos a little bit. It's been a bit hard. Felt inspired to do this one. I really enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. Um, if you watched all the way to the end, leave me a... What emoji should we do? Leave me a... Leave me a turtle. Leave me a little turtle emoji to let me know that you watched all the way to the end. That's everything from me. I'll see you soon. Ciao.